Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Got this 2010 Audi A5. And uh, the problem with this vehicle was that the convenience key feature was not working. I've already fixed the problem, but uh, I felt like, you know, I should probably make a video uh, explaining how I was able to fix this without having to replace the entire control module. And let me get to that in a second. But the problem initially when this vehicle arrived was that the key, convenience key feature was not operating. So essentially this car uh, should unlock by itself whenever you're near the car with the key uh, you just, like if i have the key in my pocket i'm supposed to be able to just grab the door handle and it should unlock by itself and i can open the door uh, and likewise whenever you shut the door all you have to do is put your hand over the door handle and the door will lock by itself <clears throat> so the car the that that feature was not operating and uh the key itself was actually working so you could lock it and unlock it um and you know it the key works fine the remote works just fine you can open the trunk but the uh the convenience fe feature was just not working also what wasn't working was the push start button so if you get in the car uh this car is a push start and uh you should be able to just put your foot on the brake pedal and push the start button and the vehicle will start up uh, in this case the vehicle would not start and we would get a message up here in the cluster that looks something like this now we were able to start the vehicle with actually just manually inserting the key into the slot here and pushing on the key so you're able to drive the vehicle uh, let me take you over to the computer I'm gonna show you the technical service bulletin that applies to this all right guys so here we are over at the computer I've got all data pulled up and uh, I've located the technical service bulletin that applies to this uh, particular problem. Uh, if you look over here at the top, you'll be able to see technical service bulletin number over here. Anyways, to get to the uh, meat and potatoes of this, what the bulletin is stating is that the condition is if the vehicle doors cannot be locked or unlocked using the advanced key, and also if the vehicle cannot be started using the start stop button. The other key thing is that uh, you need to have one of these codes present. So you'll have either this DTC 03283, which is the driver side, the antenna has a short circuit to ground. And this is actually the code that we had present on this vehicle. Uh, the other DTC is uh, 03284, which is the right side antenna on the right door, which some vehicles have them, some vehicles don't, depends on what model you have. Uh, or you have this DTC, uh, 00183, which is the interior access uh, antenna. And it also has a note here that the vehicle keys function properly otherwise. Operating the door locks via the remote control as well as starting the vehicle using the ignition switch. So uh, that's exactly the, the conditions that we're having. You know, we're able to lock and unlock the door using the remote. And we're able to start the vehicle with just manually putting the key into the, into the slot. Uh, so basically the bulletin if we go down here and read it, it's pretty straightforward uh, What they tell you is um, Check the wiring Let's see here uh, The service it just says check the vehicle wiring uh, According to the wiring diagram if no errors are found with the vehicle wiring They're telling you to replace the convenient system control module uh, This is the control module that's in the trunk that uh, actually, you know is used to control the convenience feature on the on this vehicle so i thought it was pretty uh pretty strange that they would jump straight to replacing the the convenience system control module when we have codes for uh antenna short to grounds so what i found out was that it, it it's actually very unlikely that you have a problem with the actual antenna in the door um and because these vehicles tend to have so many problems with these uh, convenient system control modules. Uh, it, it's just, it's highly, it's highly likely that the module itself is bad and the antennas uh, are working just fine. So before you go straight to trying to replace an antenna, I would really follow what the bulletin is telling you. And again, they're telling you to replace the system control module, the, co the convenient system control module. Now what I want to share with you guys is how I was able to repair the module without having to replace it because I did call the dealer and the module I think was somewhere close to $600 uh, plus if we had to replace the module uh, the module itself needed to be programmed 
and um, I don't I don't think I have the ability to program that particular module uh, because it has to do with the security system uh, so I didn't want to have to go that route because taking it to the dealer for them to uh, install the module and to program it uh, I think was going to be close to around a thousand dollars so let me show you where the module is and what you can do to hopefully repair your module all right so here we are in the trunk of the vehicle uh, if you look over to the side of the trunk you'll have this um, little access panel you can just kind of fold it down uh, and you can look up inside here you'll see a couple different modules fuse box um, but the one we're looking for is this one right here this let me try to get a good shot of it this is the convenience system control module uh, and it's fairly easy to get out it's really simple to get out actually just unplug all of these connectors and there's a clip on the bottom side right here that you can just pull down with your finger and at the same time just push out on it and there's one up at the top is the same way just pick up on it and then push out on it and you're able to just slide this control module out of place like that pull it out and again disconnect all these connectors so let me pull this out this module is fairly simple to open up uh, if you look over here you'll have two tabs on this side a uh, tab on this side two tabs on this side and one more tab here and uh, what I use is just something like a pick tool and uh, just pop those tabs open and then we can remove the back cover. Uh, so let me do that first. All right, so once you pop those tabs out, um, you're able to remove the rear cover, uh, which is this, we can set it aside. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to remove this front cover. And in order, in order to do that, uh, if you look over here at the connectors, you'll find uh, little clips right here. There's a clip right here. There's a clip right here. Uh, likewise, there's a clip right here and a clip right here. So you're gonna wanna get something like a pick tool here and just uh, spread the clip open and then pop this board out. So we can pop this cover out. So let me do that real quick. All right, now that I have those clips detached, I can go ahead and pull the face off of this, the other cover. And uh, what I wanna show you here is if you're looking at the, if you're looking at the board like this, um you see this the top connector over here uh so if you look at the bottom you have uh three plugs one two three and at the top you have two one two and if we look over here in this area what you'll notice is that we have a few transistors uh there's this one here this one here and then off to the side there's another one right here and then also uh, depending on what model you have, uh, you'll have also maybe a transistor here or maybe a transistor here. These are just the pads for the transistors. Uh, now, each transistor corresponds to an antenna. So what I mean by that is that uh, this transistor, um, I did a little bit of research and I found that uh, apparently this transistor over here on the side is for the antenna that's in the center console the one that's near the start button and this transistor right here is for the uh, trunk the the antenna that's in the trunk and this transistor right here is supposedly for the uh, antenna in the driver's side door uh, this one is for the antenna in the passenger side door which this vehicle does not have you can see there's two little uh two little solder joint areas where you could put a transistor here uh, and then also according to the information that I found uh, each chip corresponds to the transistor so this chip corresponds to this transistor over here this chip corresponds with this transistor over here this chip with this transistor and likewise you'll see that if we had the certain model that had the antenna on the right door it would have a transistor here. I mean, excuse me, it would have a chip here and a transistor here. Again, a chip here and a transistor here. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what exactly the last one is for, but anyways, uh, so what I did was I tested each transistor and testing the transistor is pretty straightforward. And depending on what meter you're using, um, I'm using the Vantage Pro here. Uh, you should have an option for uh, diode continuity. Uh, and under this setting, under this setting, you should be able to uh, check the transistors. And uh, again, I, I can't do this with one hand, but 
Uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, touch the two legs on the transistor and, and uh, just compare the readings between uh, each of the transistors. And then if you find one that is unlike the other ones, then uh, you'll know that that's the one that's giving you a problem. And then again, if it correlates to the code that you have, like I said, uh, this one, uh, when I did the research, uh, showed up to be the one for the driver's side door antenna, and that is the code that I had. And also, this is the one when I put the multimeter on it and checked it, it had a different value than the other one. So uh, I, I uh, was pretty confident that this is the one that was giving me a problem. Like I said, I was able to source one locally, um, so replacing it was pretty simple. This is the one that I took out of the vehicle. Um, I'll leave the part number in the description. Uh, the only trouble that I had was that um, this connector was kind of in the way, so I had to kind of cut away some of this plastic here uh, in order to get my solder, uh, my soldering iron into the back of this, uh, onto the rear pad of this transistor, because you got to heat up back here in order to separate the transistor from the pad. All right, so I'm back in the trunk. I've got the module reinstalled. I'm gonna go ahead and show you that this thing is operating now. Again, I have the key in my pocket. Here, I'm gonna lock it just so you can see. I locked the door, and now I'm gonna come up to the door, stick my hand in. I don't know if you heard it unlock, but the door just unlocked. Well, there you go. So, if I close it, <clears throat> I can lock the door and the door just locked. Now, let's show you that we can start this vehicle with using the push button. So I got my foot on the brake. I'm gonna use the push button start. And the vehicle started. Let's go ahead and turn the radio off here. Uh, so yeah, anyways, I hope that I was able to help somebody out with this video. Uh, if I did help you out, saved you a lot of money, uh, please be kind, pay it forward. Again, this is a really simple fix. I mean, the transistor itself, uh, I think it was probably less than $3. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you have any questions, comment down below. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.